thank you everyone. Um, I'm Isabel and I'm going to be talking on behalf of Moobot uh, for our team presentation. Um, so the names listed here are all the current team members. And I'd like to thank all my teammates for their work um, you know, over the course of not just the virtual season, but um, yeah. And I'd also like to mention um, sort of our team members who are no longer on the team. Um, who did help out with the virtual season, so Kip and Uzziah, as well as team mentors, uh, Aaron, uh, Josephus, Trent and Alex. Now, before getting into it, um, I want to do something that we do quite commonly here in Australia, um, and this is an acknowledgement of country. So this is recognising the First Nations um, of where we live and work. So for us, um, we, we live on Awabakal land, so I'd like to acknowledge the Awabakal people um, and their continuing connection to the skies, uh, land and waterways. So we, we study here um, on Callaghan campus near Newcastle, um, so that's on Awabakal land. And in particular, it's on Pambalong land, which is a group within the Awabakal nation. I'd like to also mention um, the Dakinian people and acknowledge um, their ownership of the land uh, on the Central Coast campus that we have at Arumba. And I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the neighboring nations around um, the Obakal nation. So they were Boromai, Wanarua, Darug, Karingai, and Yura. And I'd like to uh, pay respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and also extend that respect to any um, sort of uh, First Nation uh, lands around, you know, across the globe from everyone calling in from around uh, internationally. So getting into um, a bit about Newbot. So we're from Australia at the University of Newcastle. We've got, this is a picture of our amazing coastline. Uh, so it's a pretty nice place. We've been involved with Rover Cup since 2002. So the team started in 2001. And if you want to learn a bit more about the team or even just like our systems, then we have a few guides. Uh, we have a team handbook here called Newbook. We also have all of our code open source on GitHub. Um, so this is our organization, Newbooks, and there are a number of repos in there that you can, um, you can find and all the licenses are pretty open. I think most of them are MIT. A bit about um, sort of our... Uh, our placing um, across the years. So we've been like in the four-legged league since 2002 and then went to the standard platform league, kid size league, um, and the team size while that was around. And I think my formatting's gone a little off here, but um, we will be there in Thailand and we've qualified. So if you're going to be there in Thailand, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, so a bit about our hardware. We use the Argus Humanoid Open Platform. So we've made a few changes to it, thus stubbing at the Nugus. Most of these are like ease of use changes um, and some things that have changed because our 3D printer is not as big as I think whatever um, Nimbro we're using. Um, so if you want to find out more about Nimbro's um, Argus Humanoid Open Platform, that's the citation there. Um, here is a picture um, as of yesterday of our robots. So this one is our our old one that we've used at a few competitions. It's made with um, 3D printing the parts in Onyx, which is nylon and carbon fiber. Um, unfortunately, because of some flex issues, um, we have moved to some other materials. So we're trialing this uh, metal leg robot at the moment, which as of uh, I think a couple of hours ago um, is successfully walking. Um, so that's pretty exciting for us. Some of the uh, sensors that we use, so we use stereo vision, although not in the software systems yet, but we're very, very close. Um, and fisheye lenses, so 180 um, degree field of view. Um, yeah, and then we have the dynamic cell motors. We have the sixes in the legs and we have the, the 64s in the arms and the neck. And we use the old uh, Darwin subcontroller and the Intel NUC. So the Intel NUC, we, um, we actually had uh, eight gigabytes of RAM to um, and a 256 gigabyte uh, SSD. So our software is encompassed by the nuclear framework. Um, so this is a C++ software framework that is meant to be quick and have high modularity potential 
Um, it has easy use of code messaging and a whole bunch of different features. It's made to be uh, pretty portable because it has kind of aspects of a lot of different systems, um, like type of systems in it. So it's quite easy to put across between things. Um, Nuclear was created with the philosophy of um, having something that is easy to use correctly and hard to use incorrectly. Um, and if you're interested in looking um, a bit about that, there's a paper um, here from 2016 about nuclear. So giving a, a bit of a very quick rundown, um, nuclear works mostly through the power plant. Um, it's a multi-threaded system. So the power plant ha handles all of the threading logic. So the user doesn't have to deal with any of the threading um, logic at all. It's handled to the power plant. And the power plant handles the, um, the, the movement of messages around the system between reactors. So reactors can be thought of as modules and these sort of emit messages to the power plant for the reactors to use or take messages from the power plant to use themselves. Uh, reactions run tasks under given conditions. And so these conditions are defined by the nuclear DSL. Um, so there's a few examples here. So we've got trigger, which is meant to be used with a message. Um, and that message, so we use protobuf uh, messaging and that trigger will, means that that reaction will run, uh, the task will run when it gets that message. The, the with keyword is a co-messaging um, system. So it allows you to get extra uh, mess uh, messaging information with a trigger. Um, we've got a few others. We have UDP, um, TCP, um, a few. There's like a one called Sync, which allows for um, like mutex kind of uh, functionality. And there's a whole list of them. Um, you can find them in the paper or also Newbook. Newbook has a overview of nuclear um, and there's a read the docs for nuclear. A localization and odometry system. Um, so our odometry works through dead reckoning um, from our start point, which we call world. And this is um, all done through an unsent common filter. It takes an input from accelerometer, gyroscope, foot down information, and also uh, the kinematics information. So we can figure out the position. The foot down, at the moment, we don't have touch sensors. We do in WeBots, but not in the real robot yet. Um, and so our foot down is either determined by a Z height method, which is just a simple, which foot is above the other, um, or we have a neural network that can also um, roughly uh, figure out the foot down as well. Our localization system um, is a particle filter and it just uses the goal positions from vision. Which then leads on to vision. So vision, uh, we use the visual mesh algorithm. Uh, this takes in odometry information. So the pipeline is pretty much um, odometry and then vision, and then vision gives localization the information it needs, the goal, the goal position uh, specifically. And so the visual mesh algorithm, it pretty much works by laying a mesh down along the image um, based on the odometry information. So it knows where the ground is. And what it does is you can see that in, in here, we've got um, the points of the mesh that are closer to the robot are further apart. And further away, they're quite um, close together. And so what happens is when, if there's a ball way back in the far corner, it will have as many points on it as a ball that's closer to the robot. So this means that it should be um, as good at detecting balls that are far away as it is detecting balls close by. Now, this, these points, so this point that is shown here, so a sample point and next six neighbors, these are um, the inputs to a convolutional neural network. And then what we get from the convolutional neural network is, um, is a, like a semantic segmentation output for each of the, um, the points. And so we use these semantic segmentation um, information uh, with heuristics to figure out where the objects are. The very first thing that we do in these heuristics is figure out what we call the green horizon. The green horizon is figured out by 
clustering field points um, through a heuristic until we get uh, one big block for the field. And after we calculate the upper convex hull, then we get this nice green line all around the outside of the field. This green line, what we do with it is we only consider points below it. So this, this reduces the amount of points that we need to, to look at by a lot. So only points below it we'll consider as goals or ball or whatever. So once we're at that point, then we have something like this. Um, and from this, we can figure out what is likely to be a ball or what is likely to be a goal post. So we have a, a fair few heuristics, which you can um, look at on your book if you'd like. Um, but a few of them include, so for the goals, we, we only consider it a goal if it intersects the green horizon. And for the balls, they have to fit a cone, a circular cone, the cone uh, point being on the camera and the base of the cone is the ball. And we determine the radius of that ball and then figure out, does that actually match the radius of the balls we expect to detect based on whatever size ball um, we should have. And so we use a few of these statistics to then um, figure out, okay, that's a ball object, that's a goal object, and we have the vectors to those uh, from the visual mesh. So it's all sort of a 3D um, complete pipeline uh, for these objects. Our motion system is primarily keyframe animations at the moment um, for things like kicking, getting up, um, except for the walk engine, which uses the Quintic walk. So this is taken from Bitbox, uh, which in turn was based off uh, Robon's walk. And yeah, it's our current walk engine as of 2020. Um, so we'll be using that on the real robot for the first time in Thailand. So to sort of uh, complement our robot systems, we have NewSight, a visual debugging tool. Now, NewSight, um, is meant to be very intuitive to use and give you a lot of good information very, um, very quickly. Um, so it is on, on a browser, so it's web-based, so you can use it um, on pretty much any, any operating system. And we've got a number of different views which allow us to figure out what's, um, what's going on on the robot. Now, new side is sort of encompassed by five key principles. Um, first one is keep it simple. So the, the point of the debugger is to figure out why your code is wrong. If you don't trust your debugger, it's going to be very, very hard to use it. Um, you've got to have faith in your debugger and the simpler it is, the less likely it's going to have errors. Next one is using UDP and stateless messaging. We use UDP because of the lower latency, um, but because it's unreliable, we make sure that each of our messages is self-contained. Um, so these are like a self-contained protobuf message that we send across. Um, then we have declarative data-driven driven rendering. Um, so that's sort of quite high level um, programming. Um, so it's, you're not having like 10 lines to draw an object, you're having like one. Um, and we're, we're only tracking the data to be rendered, we're not doing anything too complicated uh, because we don't want to have those bugs. We want it to be very trustworthy. Then we want to go beyond numbers and graphs. So this is pretty important in you know, real-time um, debugging. You want to be able to quickly figure out what's going on. You want it to be intuitive. You want to have context. Um, it needs to be usable. So resembling the real world is one um, sort of philosophy that helps with that. Then user control over what's visualized. Um, this is done in sort of two ways. So on the robot side, you can specifically decide what messages to send out. And on the, on the new site side, you specify, you can toggle um, exactly what you want to see. So if you want to know more about this, um, our 2020 uh, virtual Roha, um, one of our presentations done by Josephus, uh, which is on the website, goes over this in a lot more detail. Now, getting to some of the more um, new bots, uh, not new bots, um, the new bots, the we bots kind of aspects, uh, the virtual season specific stuff, uh, sort of what we're here for, um, is the robot model. And that's 
quite simple. Um, we just took the URDF that we already had, converted it using Cyborgs' tool. You can find our own GitHub. All of our stuff is open source. Um, and really all we need to, to do is um, sort of fix up these bounding boxes, model our, our sensors. Um, we don't use um, like the fisheye fish type cameras in Webox. Um, we probably should plan to sort of update this, but at the moment it's just rectilinear. Um, and we only use, we have two cameras in the robot model, but we only use one since it, our software doesn't use two yet. The gyroscope and accelerometer are modeled off the data sheets um, for the ones in the CM740. Uh, okay, so a few of our tools that we've made in Webots. Um, this one's, I quite like this one, it's been quite useful recently. Um, and this is something that we've been working on for a while. It kind of started off as the way that we can um, sort of develop our networking for the Rover Cup 2021 competition um, while that was still being developed. Uh, the Rover Cup environment was being developed. Uh, and now it's sort of evolved into this test area where we can um, calculate the error of our systems and also test our systems in isolation. So here I've got um, a screenshot of a new site and this is our chart view. And you can see here that the role error is, is um, hovered over and it highlights that chart. So that's a cool um, feature of new site. And here I can see what exactly the error is of um, the robot's odometry. And so we can do that for odometry, localization, vision, um, and also testing those systems in isolation by getting that ground truth information in Webots. Um, and this would be really cool to sort of extend then to maybe motion capture um, on the real robot. Our vision data tool, um, this was created a year ago. Um, so we could have vision data for Robocop 2021. We've updated it for the virtual season. That was one of the main things that we did across the um, sort of the development uh, in, the, in the virtual season. So when it was the environment was updated to have the background and the ball textures change, um, we updated this to have randomly um, assigned background and ball for each image. And we also collect metadata that the visual mesh, mesh needs. So these are the lens parameters and also odometry. Now here we've, we've also got robots in here um, and colored them. So uh, we haven't got robots in our, uh, our real robot because we don't have a data set yet. But in here, we've been able to actually train our, our, the visual mesh on robots. Uh, with a pretty good accuracy. Um, so hopefully maybe next year we'll be able to actually implement um, some behavior with robot detections. And then we've got our walk optimization tools. So this was originally made for Gazebo back in 2018. Um, there was a publication in the RoboCup Symposium. Um, it was a poster presentation. Um, and yeah, you can find that. Um, has a lot of information on the tool, but it's basically a multi-objective genetic algorithm. And we've been using that recently in Webots. So we've brought it over from Gazebo to Webots. And now um, we're trying to tune the walk uh, for uh, various different uh, mo motions that we want. So this robot here is actually walking backwards. Um, so we've been able to optimize that to walk backwards uh, without falling over. And but yeah, it's just running a number of generations and individuals, and then hopefully we can get something good out of it. And we have already seen pretty good results. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And that is the end of that. So thank you for listening. That was sort of a brief overview of what we've been, what our systems are, what we've been doing with Webots. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Isabel, for the talk. Um, we have, have a little bit of time for questions, if you would like. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to ask them here, you can ask them here. If you want to write them in the chat, that's fine as well. Um, so if anybody wants to, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, your tools you have, they they, they look amazing. Uh, I, I've seen, so you switched from Gazebo to Webbox, right? 
do you have any can you give us any insight of your experience is it easier with web bots is it harder i mean yeah i think from what i so i didn't um specifically work on the walk optimization tool in either case but from what i saw it was a lot of work to get gazebo working um, and even afterwards we're having trouble getting it working again um, so the plugin was a bit difficult to to um because we don't use ross i understand that ross has like a gazebo easy gazebo um sort of interface but we didn't have that um so it was quite difficult but with webots it wasn't as as hard. Um, it took definitely less time. And I think already having everything set up with the official Robocop world um, sort of helped as well. So I think it's definitely definitely better in, in WeBots for us. And I think that's probably something to do with um, like the plugin and the connection and all that. I see, thank you very much. I'd also like uh, to ask a question. Uh, is the, the data set you collected, is it publicly available or do you just um, use it for um, No, we don't have it publicly available, but we could. We could definitely. Um, it's not too hard to manage to uh, just get it up on um, our repo and, and run it. Um, but yeah, we could probably compile something to, to have sort of open um, for anyone to download. And a second question I had about the vision system. So uh, you had a slide where you uh, had like a heat map of uh, the ball detection. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of ball detections in the robot itself, I think that is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you, um, because you know the, the kinematics of the robot and the model itself, do, do you have something to um, filter those out? So I think, um... The, the robot being detected isn't so much of an, an issue because it won't fit um, to the, the cone, the circular cones, and it, it just won't have the right, like definitely uh, most of these, it's only the hand that may be a bit dodgy, but I think to be honest, it's probably too big to be considered a ball. Um, yeah, so I think the heuristics will take it out um, well enough that it won't be a problem. Okay, thank you very much. I have one more question about also your vision system. How much do you rely on GPU um, acceleration? Um, all right. I don't know too much about that. Um, I could probably find out for you, but um, I believe we don't really use too much in the way of, um, I mean, we, we use the, the Intel, um, whatever the GPU, on board the knock is. Um, I'm not sure on acceleration though. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Then uh, let's thank, thank Isabel again for the talk. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it was very nice to hear what you, what you did with your team.